Hi there, everyone. A few months ago, I shared a component and some of the logic that I used to create this slime mold simulation in Touch Designer, basically using GLSL and TOPS to create a simulation of a physarium, which is a naturally occurring single celled organism, which we call a slime mold. Now, this was all in TOPS running on the GPU, and it had some controls that could be manipulated. But ultimately, I couldn't get this really working effectively in 3D. So now using POPs, I've sort of revisited that idea. And I now have something which is still in development, but is getting to a nice place that is working in 3D to recreate these Physarum effects. The component that I'm going to walk you through today is my slime mold 3D component. I will be making this available for free on my Patreon. All you have to do is subscribe to the free tier and there will be some extras for people subscribed to the component section of my Patreon as well. Let's take a look at the controls we have going on in this component. The first control we have is length and length defines how long each of our trails are. If we have a length of one, it's going to be just a singular particle versus if we have a length of 30, there'll be a trail of 30 particles in each of our trails. Having a longer length gives us a longer trail that looks cool, but ultimately this is going to slow down our computer over time, especially if we have a lot of particles. So I like to go for about 17 or if I have a lot a lot of particles something like one just so I'm visualizing that singular point and it becomes more concrete as I have more particles. The next parameter is number of points and this really defines how many points are in the system. Currently this is based around a feedback loop so if I press my one key it's going to reinitialize that system. So right now I have a thousand and now I have 15,000. And let's go to 10,000. And so this is a way that we can control how many particles are in our system. A little later, I'm going to show you how we can input our own geometries or point clouds to be affected using this Fisarium system. Right now, I'm also going to just up my length back to 15 so we can see that visual a bit more concretely. The next parameter is sensor distance and this is basically how far forward each of these particle agents is looking and this will allow us to make operations based on if it intersects or comes close to other particles. So if we move this up to one we can see that the effect becomes a lot more chaotic and pronounced. Generally we want something kind of small so something like 0.0 zero seven is probably going to give us a nice effect because then this is going to be looking in a more localized manner. The next parameter is sensor angle and this is going to determine our offset and radians for left right up and down. Typically something around 1 to 0 0.6 is going to give an interesting effect although you can move this up to something a little bit higher and get different effects based on that angle value. You can just eyeball this to what feels good for you. Step size is how fast we're driving this system. So if we have a higher step size or higher value, it's going to increment more quickly. I tend to go for something that's kind of lower. So something that's got a few decimal points before whatever value is driving that in that feedback loop. We also have this rotation angle and this is the maximum turn of angle per frame in radians. And this is how quickly the agent can sort of change angles. If I have that at zero, we're going to see that things mostly go in a straight line versus if I have that at something like five, I might need to reset that system. And we can see there's sort of greater diversity in how things are rotating. Let's do like two pi or close to two pi. Let's do 6.5. See what that looks like. And now move it down to a smaller value where we can see there is rotation, but it's a lot more diffuse. 
And so this is something you can play around with to control sort of the angle change per frame of that system. Those are sort of the core things that we're going to use to control the slime mold simulation. But we also have a few things here. We have our minimum bounds, which I spelled incorrectly. And this is basically the bounds for the left and right hand side of our system for when we might create an edge that's going to be sort of bounced off. Wrap boundary parameter allows us to choose basically how particles respond to an edge. If it's at zero, it's going to bounce off the edge. And if it's at one, it's going to wrap around your object. For sensor radius, this is basically how big a sample each of our points is looking at. So the larger, the bigger the effect. Think about if you have a really big attractor and that's going to pull a lot of points into its field. That's the same thing that will happen if we turn up the sensor radius. This is good maybe if you have a, a much larger system that's in a much bigger 3D space. Right now having a larger radius is going to make the effect much more diffuse and less detailed. So having something that's really small for these more small localized networks in 3D space is going to look really nice. Other values we can control is we have this amplitude factor. So this allows us to control a underlying noise manipulation that's sort of manipulating how we're driving this network. So if we have this at zero, we're going to eventually sort of reach a more static form versus if we have a slight value on this, we're going to have something that will take longer to form an equilibrium. We also have this mix value here. Only the first value is going to do something and it will mix between zero and one. If we have it at zero, we're going to be feeding back the unnoised shape. And if we have it at one, we'll feed back that noised shape. So let's see how that works. Just like that. And then you can also mix between and have something in the middle. This clamp, min and max are sort of just a extra cutoff we can use in the event that we maybe have a system that is escalating a bit outside of where we want it to go. We can just have this hard cutoff and generally I'll just match this to whatever shapes I'm using in terms of their boundaries. These are sort of the core parameters of just dragging and dropping in this component and using it in a session. The next thing I'm going to show you is how we can bring in different geometries and point clouds. What we have on our slime mold 3D is two inputs. The top input is basically the starting position and number of points. So in this instance, I have a sphere point generator that's generating 10,000 particles. If I plug that in and hit generate, we'll see that we start from a sphere. Likewise, if I turn down the number of particles, we'll see that that starting number of particles is much less. And the same if we turn that up. This is a way that you can input any geometry that you want into this starting point. The second value we have is basically a sort of an attraction point. So this is something that's going to draw our particles towards. So think about a sort of a substrate that we can grow over. So let's bring in that sphere and see what happens. We can see that the particles sort of mainly flock around that sphere and we can get more variation if we turn up that amplitude because that sphere, that substrate that we're pulling to is changing every time. What we can also do, which I think is really cool, is we can plug in to 3D objects. So in this case, we have this bust. Let's just zoom in there so we can see him. And what I've done here is I have deleted some of the points just using the thin attribute just so we don't have something that's massively dense that's going to wreck our system. And this means I can also put in that as our starting geometry as well. Likewise, 
you see you start off with that shape and then it pulls into a, another shape. Let's go back to this for both and I'm going to up the amplitude on that noise so we can see that our shape is going to morph a little bit more over time. Maybe even down a bit more. And let's try changing a few values here. Change that mix file up to one so we can pull more onto the shape. There we go. We have a much more sort of realistic effect of this pulling onto our actual 3D shape. By playing with these parameters, you can get some really interesting and quite unique effects. In this example, I've applied 3D geometry to that system as well as some quantization. And in this example, it's the same system, but I've also applied color to those 3D objects. Now, this component has been made with a little bit of help from ChatGPT. It's sort of my first Vibe code assisted component. And what I'm gonna do for people who are on the component level is I'm gonna share this chat so that you can see the ins and outs of getting the AI to actually write effective GLSL, particularly GLSL for a pop. And component subscribers will also get a more put together example file that shows the talks in use with a few different examples and just for kicks we'll have the original available as well in there so you can play with the 2d pixel version as well i hope you enjoy this and stay tuned for more tutorials and more touch designer creations bye for now